What is up enthusiasts, it is Cedar Flags here and welcome back to another one of my videos. So as we all know, 2020 was not the best year for coasters and there are obvious reasons for that. But the only thing we could really do at this point is look forward to the next year of roller coasters, 2021. And oh my goodness, it's going to be a good one. So to look at all these coasters, I am going to do what I do best and count down the top 10 best coasters of 2021. Now, I just have two rules. First off, this is my own opinion. I am not ranking this based off of someone else's opinion or any statistics. This is solely based off of what I think will be the better coaster. Second off, I will be including roller coasters that were supposed to open up this year, but did not because of the COVID-19 pandemic, including Jersey Devil, Iron Gwazi, etc. So, without further ado, let's get started with the list. Coming in at the number 10 spot, we have Monster at Gronalund. This is the B&M invert coming to the park, and let me say, this ride does not look like the best B&M invert, but at the same time, it looks slick. I absolutely love everything about this ride, and the park really did everything they could have with the plot of land that they were working with. This ride takes up such a tiny plot of land, and it crosses over itself so many times. It was even built on top of multiple buildings, and that is what makes this ride so cool. This ride is going to have so many near misses and foot choppers when it comes to those buildings down below. It is going to be sweet. I don't know how forceful it's going to be, but knowing B&M and how intense they can make coasters, it's going to be a good time. Coming in at the number 9 spot, we have Icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando. Man, I really didn't want to put this coaster at such a low spot on the list, but unfortunately, so many rides are coming out this year, so I had to include it. This is the quadruple launch coaster by Premier Rides coming to SeaWorld Orlando, and let me just say, I am a huge fan of this ride. And there are a lot of reasons why. First of all, looking at the official POV coming out from the park, I know it is animated, but it looks like there's going to be a lot of airtime on this ride, and I'm talking about a lot. This ride doesn't pack any inversions. It focuses solely on the positive and negative G-forces in the aspect that it is a multi-launch. This ride looks really cool for families, and I feel like it will appease them more than it will the thrill seekers that are going to get on rides like Mako, Kraken, and of course Manta. Coming in at the number 8 spot, we have Stunt Pilot at Silverwood. Now this ride is basically just a clone of the two existing RMC single rail Raptors, including Railblazer at California's Great America, and Wonder Woman Golden Lasso at Fiesta, Texas. So I'll keep this short and sweet, but this coaster looks absolutely incredible and will definitely be the best coaster at the park in my personal opinion. Coming in at the number seven spot, we have Jersey Devil coming to Six Flags Great Adventure. Now, oh my goodness, I was talking about RMC Raptors in the last one. Well, this is going to be a taller, faster, and longer version of all three of those. Yeah, this thing looks absolutely insane and will probably be the king of RMC Raptors once it opens. What do I even have to say? This thing is going to have much ejector airtime and lots of insane forces. And by the end of the ride, you are going to be thinking, what the heck just happened? This might be the most disorienting ride at the park. And maybe not the best because there is El Toro, keep in mind. At the number six spot, we have Time Traveler going to Plopsaland de Pan in Belgium. Now, this ride has really fallen under the radar, but it will be a Mac Extreme spinning coaster with a sister coaster with the same exact name at Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri. Well, that is until 2021 when Plopsaland de Pan opens up this monstrosity. Now, let me just say this looks even more intense than the time traveler currently existing. The elements look more sharp and the airtime looks more intense. This ride will have five inversions and two launches, one having an airtime hump similar to what's on Pantheon and Copperhead Strike. And let me just say this entire coaster looks so disorienting, so insane that it definitely belongs a spot on the higher spots on this list. At the number five spot, we have Abyssus at Energylandia in Poland. Now we all know how amazing Energylandia is and how they're probably going to add more than one coaster next year looking at RCDB, but this is definitely the highlight attraction that is opening up next year. And oh my goodness, looking at this ride, it looks like to be one of the best rides in the park in the top three most definitely. This ride is going to feature two launches and multiple inversions. I mean, looking at that second launch, look at that top hat and the elements coming after that. Some of the most intense airtime on the testing videos as well. 
So this ride is absolutely going to haul all the way. Looking at this ride and all the near misses including it, this ride just looks like a crazy experience that you are going to look back at and think, what the heck just happened? Let's get on it again. Abyssus is going to be one incredible ride, and Energylandia is definitely going to benefit from it. Now, let me just say that 5 and 4 are neck and neck. If I were to put these on flat pieces of land, I could not decide which one is better. I went over and over, and it took me honestly an hour to figure out which ride was better, but I decided to put Velocicoaster at the higher spot at number 4, just because of the theming. Now, this is coming to Universal Studios in Orlando, and let me just say, this ride looks absolutely incredible from start to finish. The first launch takes you through a lot of scenery, and that first launch has a lot of head choppers and near misses. It has a few floater elements, but the party really doesn't start until the second launch. This second launch includes that insane top hat, that wave turn, the zero-g stall, and that low-to-the-ground heartline roll including some more floater and ejector airtime moments. Now looking at this second half alone, this definitely scores up high on this list. Even if the ride was just the second half alone, it would be high up on this list. This ride just looks incredible from start to finish and looks like the full experience. At the number three spot, we have the final multi-launch on this list. It is Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Now, oh my goodness, this looks like one of the best rides in the world. Maybe the best ride in the state of Virginia. This ride just looks like an incredible experience from start to finish. It doesn't look like there's a single dull moment on this ride, especially in the second portion. That first portion is a little meandering, but it does look like it includes some floater and ejector moments. That second launch, though, is really what is going on with this ride. It has multiple airtime moments while you're launching, a backwards vertical spike, and some insane long drawn out forceful elements after that. You have this massive top hat that goes down near the Rhine River, and then you have an outward bank turn, which will definitely provide some insane G-forces, similar to the one on Steel Vengeance. It looks a lot like that one. And after that, you have this massive zero G stall. It looks like it just lasts forever. That's going to provide some of the best hang time in the world. Now we move on to the top two. Going to the best coaster coming out in 2021 in the United States, we have Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa. Oh my goodness, what a ride. This looks like one of the best roller coasters on earth. No question about it. This RMC Hyper Hybrid will be the tallest and steepest in the United States. Yeah, this is going to be a crazy ride and it is going to provide some of the most insane negative g-forces you have ever seen. It has two inversions, one including that insane death roll that everyone's talking about. I couldn't even imagine sitting in the back row during that element. Some of the most insane negative airtime moments on this ride include that outward bank turn, that death roll, and the series of ejector moments near the end of the ride. This ride just looks like the full package when it comes to RMC, and is probably going to be the best coaster in the state of Florida. This ride just looks like it is crazy and you do not catch a break from that first drop to that final break run. But we are moving on. That ride is truly insane. And honestly, like I said, looks like one of the best rides in the world, but a ride that just looks slightly better and could potentially be one of the best, if not the best ride in the world is the Intamin Mega coming to Walibi Belgium this year. Now it does not have a name yet, but oh my goodness, this ride looks bonkers. This ride looks like one of the most insane and full experiences you can get on a ride. This ride clocks in at almost 80 seconds in ride time, and every single last second of this ride is filled with ejector airtime, hang time, and floater airtime. This ride just looks crazy, and it looks like it could potentially be one of the most airtime-filled rides on Earth. Looking at that massive camelback reminiscent of Expedition G-Force, after that you go into some crazy one-of-a-kind elements, that are near inversions. You have some of the craziest floater airtime moments on any ride. You have this crazy wave turn element, and you have multiple stangle dives, multiple airtime moments, off axis airtime moments. This ride just looks like the complete package. It looks like one of the most insane, crazy experiences you can get on a roller coaster. My number one roller coaster, as you know, is Steel Vengeance. And this looks like one of the rides that could really compete with it. This ride is not being talked about anywhere as much as it should, at least here in the States. But honestly, this ride looks insane from start to finish and looks like it will provide some of the most insane experiences a ride could offer. 
But that is my list. What do you think about it? Let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what you think is the best coaster of 2021 or make up your own top 10 list. I will definitely be glad to read. Thank you guys for watching. I definitely support the channel. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later.